Hello friends. Today we are doing something very special because it's Sivori technique with these amazing designs but using natural pigments and in this case we are going to be using onion skin so very easy to obtain and the colors will vary between orange and green that it's perfect because my room is in those tones <laughs> so yes very exciting for this hope it works and just come with me in the process <laughs> I have these onion samples that I've made before because I've been experimenting with onion skin for a while and those uh, are from, like these ones are from just orange skin, <laughs> I guess, normal one and this is from red onion or purple onion it will also vary and change color depending on the mordant we are using we are trying to do this the most sustainable possible and so we are using two mordants in this case soya milk and iron water that I will tell you how to do in a minute don't get scared <laughs> it's very easy to do and yes just a little of a um, advice here like go with a very open mind because you don't really know the colors that will come out until they come out and the piece completely dries and also a disclaimer here like this is natural pigments and as you wash them they will fade like with anything honestly but in this case probably um, quicker I don't really know this because I haven't washed my uh, dyed pieces that much to really realize. So, yes, this is just an advice. <laughs> and but other than that, the process is so fun, and also adding the shibori technique to it, like it's gonna be a total surprise. So be ready. This is the soya milk that I steam again for 10 minutes or so in the stove. Now, this step might not be compulsory. I don't know exactly what it does, but I've always done it like that, preheating the milk to later um, sink the, the fabrics in there. Now, as this is probably too small, I'm gonna transfer it to here. And... Um, so, this is pre-washed, but now it is dried because I was ironing it. Mm, <laughs> I think I, I did a stupid thing. It's, now it's gonna wrinkle again but you know we are here to try and just I don't know enjoy the process I guess so I'm gonna try to do something like this and I have several pieces of fabric so I'm gonna they are marked and I'm gonna try and do a different pattern with each of them now well let's let's do this and with a simple dish I'm going to keep it all at the bottom 
so that I make sure that all the fabric is receiving, uh, in this case, the mordant. Okay. And it's gonna be there for 24 hours minimum. Okay? Yeah. Now, about the other mordant that we are using, the composition is this one. And now I have a dilemma here because I decided to do two versions of this the iron water normal one <laughs> and the iron water special one. And here there are in the, in the in the special one there are three things that we can change. First the dilution dilution how diluted the mordant is in the water. So if we add more water I assume it's gonna be less dark. We can do also the time left in the mordant so we can half the original time that is 24 hours and we can also pre-do the Sibori folding and then introduce it into the iron water. Now, if we apply these three techniques in the special mordant, we might not know which was the one that was actually working or if there were several of them working at the same time. So I thought that maybe what we should do is in the iron normal one we have to do the folding before and then in the special one I thought about changing the dilution and the time that it's in the mordant. Does that sound clear and reasonable? I hope it does. This is the concentrated um, iron water. Well, it's not the concentrated, but it's the most concentrated one I have, because I only have this jar, because I've never actually dyed big pieces, so for me this was more than enough. But now, as there's more fabric, this might not be enough. And so both versions have to be diluted, just one more than the other. Okay? Okay, let's do it. I will put some in here, like roughly half of it. And as there is a lot now here, I'm gonna do it with this. <laughs> Try not to stain anything. <laughs> Now I'm going to dilute even more this jar, okay? Here we will be putting the fabric that is not going to be folded yet, okay? So these three pieces of fabric will go here.
the next day. Now, um, as we know, some of them have already been folded before putting in the mordant, but the others, okay, I have a few fabrics that are drying now to apply the different folding methods, okay? I thought that that was more convenient in a way, the fact that I dry them, I mean, because the cotton has this property that when it's humid or like wet, the consistency kind of change, okay? It becomes very resistant and I thought that that might be a problem for folding. So better to dry, well, <laughs> I'm saying better, but I don't know how it's gonna work. Better to dry and then fold and then put it in the pigment. I have my water steaming, it was for about 15 minutes in the stove, boiling. And now we just need to add the onion skins. The color depends on many things, not only how much skin you put, but also the onion itself. It can be more pigmented or less pigmented. Put this back in the stove at very low heat just for it to steam for around 30 minutes. So, apart from that, um, these two other fabrics, I'm not gonna, I don't know if you see, I don't wanna touch a lot. This was the soya one, and this was the iron one. And these two, I'm not gonna let them dry, because we are not gonna fold them, okay? The idea, it's to do like an ombre situation. Let's see how that goes.
one eternity later. It's getting late. I have my special iron prefolded uh, pieces of fabric ready and wet. I'm not sure exactly if I should do this before drying or after drying, but honestly, one, I cannot wait. Two, I'm afraid that the, the pattern will disappear the longer I wait. That's exactly why I took them out of the uh, pigment path. Because, <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I'm not sure if the pattern will, will be there at all. So let's start revealing and we will see. And as these are the ones that we are doing first, we will learn what to do with the other ones. If we should leave them more time in the pigment bath or not. <sighs> okay, I'm already seeing some pattern here. It's looking not bad. Maybe I should have left them a bit more. So, okay, I think I'm gonna leave this in the bath and then in a couple of hours take them out, rinse and let them dry like they are, like this. Okay, just flat somewhere and that's it. And tomorrow we will re reveal together all the pieces. Exciting. The next day. Good morning. It's revealing day. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. Okay, I already see some patterns here. I jump straight forward <laughs> to do this. I'm so excited. I just couldn't wait. Okay. 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 I was not expecting this at all. But I don't dislike it. I need to rinse it properly and let it try and see what's the ending color but I don't dislike it I didn't think it was gonna be a square but now that I see it it's like yeah next this weird thing I hope it doesn't take me long to undo this because this is how it is looking so far. Uh, uh, itchy nose. One eternity later. Okay, ready? This is so cool. This is how it looks. And it's pretty fire, isn't it? It took a long while to prepare all the showing lines but I don't regret it at all and I think it's gonna look pretty cool when it's dry because if you see the white parts are completely white so and this was one of the ones am I right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was one of the ones that were uh, put it in the in the mordant after it was um, folded. So I can really see that the mordant didn't reach the white part, which is pretty cool, and that's why it is actually white and not orangey. So that's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Next. 
it's so orange I really like this tone but I'm afraid that um, with the washes it will fade away and will end up in a more subtle orange but we will see okay I don't want anything spilling <laughs> okay with this is so easy much better than with the scissors I'm so excited okay <coughs> This is so cool! It has a very cool gradient. The <laughs> supposed to be in the middle line is not in the middle, but that's okay because the pillow is gonna be in a organic shape, <laughs> you know? But that's so cool! <laughs> I'm genuinely so surprised with the colors in the patterns. I didn't know it was gonna work that well, honestly. And I think the color combination with all of them is gonna be like very organic, very natural looking. I love this. I, I, I'm, I just can't wait to see them all dry and have the pillows ready. I think I'm gonna open this one first. Well, no. <laughs> I'm gonna open this one first. Okay, this has a very cool gradient from this corner to this other corner. The best part that it's looking it's this one, where the contrast is really good, really nice. I love this process, honestly. I'm so excited. Okay, this is the last one. This is supposed to look like a... It reminds me of the fish spine, in a way. But I was here a little bit random, placing my threads, and I'm already saying that the threads really influenced on the color pattern. So it might be just a mess of random lines. I have all my textiles ready to be sewn, but before that I will leave you a chart here so that your life is going to be easier when you adopt this uh, project. Now, um, I need to sew them together, so be right back. These are my pillows, they are sealed, they are ready. I didn't use any zipper, any button, and I used this method that it's just folding it and it hugs the pillow so it doesn't go anywhere. So very convenient. And and about the the designs, I simply love how they turn out. They look so professional so organic at the same time and they just pair very well together which which was one of my concerns because you know like they are different patterns so i was very hesitant but they turn out so great i simply love them and they are two-sided so whenever you get tired of one side then you can swap and I have four of them, so different combinations and just, yes, never get tired of them. And just a few things to mention so that we all learn from 
what I did. Um, first thing, I think that um, not all the parameters were affecting because the time that they spend uh, in the diet didn't really matter, I think, because this one that was the honeycomb uh, pattern uh, spent so much less time than this one that it's the other honeycomb pattern that spent like twice or more the amount of time in the dye. So I don't think that matters that much because this uh, green is much more strong and vibrant than this other one. So yes, however what was different here was the dilution of the mordant, in this case the iron water. Um, this was not diluted or not as diluted and this one was more diluted so yes and other thing that could have affected and I think really like makes a different uh, makes a difference is um, the pre-folding method because when you fold it um, before the mordant, then the mordant also creates a little pattern that you, well, I don't know if you can see here, the gaps are white and then the outside is like beige. So the beige is the mordant, the white is the base and then, well, the, the green is the mordant interacting with the pigment. And I had so much fun in the process, it was such a learning experience and full of surprises that I simply cannot stop encouraging you to try this and share the results with me, with the community, so that we all learn from it. Again, if you have any doubt, any question, please ask here or in my Instagram. And that's it. Hope this was inspirational and hope you have fun in the process when you try. <laughs> See you soon. Bye.